podcast you've been looking for all along. Step into the life of urban exploration with guests from around the world. Welcome to No Tracers. Welcome back to the No Tracers podcast. I hope you had a great week. It is Friday today, and that means it's time for another episode of No Tracers, the podcast. This show is all about urban exploring. We talk about exploring cities, rooftops, and abandoned places on this show. So if you're into any of that stuff, definitely stick around. If you're a new listener, please hit that subscribe button. I would love for you to get notified every time we upload a new episode, which is every Friday, by the way. I would like to start uploading two of these a week if possible, but that means I need more guests. So if you know an urban explorer or if you are an urban explorer yourself, please hit me up on Instagram or TikTok at no tracers and we will get you on the show. I would love to hear your stories or your friends stories or your friends friends stories or anybody that you recommend. I would love to get them on the show. If you are a veteran listener or even if it's your first time and you like what you hear, please leave a rating and feedback on the podcast, especially if you're on Apple Podcasts. All you got to do is search for No Tracers. Go to the bottom of the No Tracers podcast. You will see other ratings and feedback. Give us a rating. Give us some feedback. It helps us get more listeners. And hey, if we want to keep this podcast growing, we need more listeners just like you. Before we get into the show, there's a couple things I got to let you know about. First of all, there are several Amazon links down in the description that are links to different gear that I think will help you on your explorations, especially if you're new to urban exploring. Definitely check out those links. If you guys are interested in photography books, like coffee table books, I actually have one out called No Tracers, and Urban Explorer's Diary. If you want to get a copy of that, or if you want to see more of my photography or read my blog posts, which share the stories of my urban explorations, just head to notracers.com. And if you guys... Do leave a rating and feedback like I mentioned before. I will actually send you a signed photo print of mine that I've taken of an abandoned place that I've explored as a way of saying thank you for doing that. It's absolutely free. So yeah, if you do leave a rating and feedback, send me a screenshot on Instagram and I'll get you a signed photo print. I love mailing those out to people. They put them on their walls, they frame them up, and they look freaking awesome. So the next thing I need to let you know about is that if you're not investing your money, what are you doing? Why are you... Why are you just letting your money sit in a savings account where it earns like no interest. Start investing your money in cryptocurrency today. Join me on Coinbase and start start putting your money where your mouth is. There's a link down in the description to get $10 of Bitcoin if you guys want to get started there. And if you want to start getting into the stock market, you can join Webull by hitting the link in the description. You will get four free stocks by using my affiliate code down there and enjoy your stocks. All you got to do is deposit $100 or more and you will automatically get those four free stocks, one of which could be valued up to $1,600. And the last thing I need to let you know about is that there is a partner here on this podcast and that partner is Liquid Death Water. If you've never heard of Liquid Death Water, don't worry. I've got an ad coming for you in three, two, one. From the streams of the Austrian Alps comes a new kind of water. A water that is sure to raise you from your grave. If you're tired of buying cases of plastic water bottles that contain carcinogens and God knows what else, or if you're trying to lower your waste footprint, Liquid Death comes in beautifully rugged aluminum cans. Murder your thirst with a can of Liquid Death. Check the link in the description and use code just the letter K at checkout for 10% off your order. Liquid death, murder your thirst. So if you want 10% off your order at liquiddeath.com, if you want to get some tasty, tasty water and you want to help the planet, check out liquiddeath.com. Use code just the letter K for 10% off or hit the link in the description. It will automatically apply that code for you. You can get one case of water. You can get 30 cases of water. I see you guys ordering 30 cases of water. Thank you. I appreciate that. That helps me out a lot. Cool. All right. Without further ado, let me introduce my guest for this week, Alice in Wanderlust. Please introduce yourself and talk about how long you have been exploring for. Hi, my name is Kim, a.k.a. Alice in Wanderlust. Uh, I explore abandoned places, and I've been exploring since 2008. 
So tell me what got you into exploring in the first place. A lot of people that I've spoken to on this podcast, we've had people that have explored for a few months, a few years, uh, people that have been exploring since the 90s. So so what got you into exploring? What made you catch this bug? Well, you know, I've been thinking about that question and, uh, well, I've always been attracted to decaying places. I can remember when I was a little girl um, and I was hanging out with my grandmother and we would walk by this this old Victorian home that was abandoned. And uh, I was like, oh God, I wonder what it looks like inside, I would think. Um, it's now newly renovated, but, um, but obviously I was a young girl and I didn't explore then. I would have to say what got me into it was I lost my job. Um, in 2008, unexpectedly, and uh, with some time on my hands, I decided to pick up a camera and start taking pictures. And at that time, I was just taking pictures of like, I don't know, the ocean and flowers and stuff. But then as uh, time went on, um, I later on, I moved to Philadelphia, and I was out exploring and I would see all the dilapidated buildings and stuff like that. And I got so intrigued by them, particularly one, the Divine Lorraine Hotel, a stunning building in Philadelphia that's now renovated, um, but at the time was not. And I so wanted to go inside, but I was too chicken. And in the beginning, I did a lot of exploring on my own, but that building was the one that really, I was like, oh, I really like this. I want to go inside. So... That I would say, yeah, the Divine Lorraine got me into it. Wow. You know? So tell me a little bit more about that hotel in particular. Like, what was it about it? I, I'm looking at pictures right now online of it, and it's it's absolutely gorgeous. But Yeah, the, just the structure of it, the, the, the architecture. I'm always – I love old architecture, you know. I mean, many explorers have talked about it and how there is no integrity in – in architecture these days mm -hmm. and you know they don't make stuff like that anymore and to see um to see that back then it just was just so intriguing it's so massive and then the big sign on top to vine lorraine it was just very intriguing to me so from that point on i just started exploring and then i got into hospitals and stuff the hospitals were uh were my first my first love of abandoned places and that was where I truly was my first explorer. I love hospitals. There's something yeah. so special about them, especially the older ones, you know? There's just something so crazy about those. Like, for example, here in LA, we have this 17-story abandoned hospital with a surgical classroom inside, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, so talk to me more about exploring hospitals and what you love so much about that. Well, again, I like old hospitals. I don't like the newer stuff. Um, just the old architecture, the decay, the, de the peeling paint, the, I don't know. I mean, I guess when I first started exploring, my first love was the, uh, of hospitals was Greystone. I'm sure you've mm -hmm. heard of it. It's a stunning Kirkbride and, um, when I would see pictures online, Antiquity Echoes is one of my inspirations and Weird New Jersey. And I would, you know, look through, you know, look through their magazines and stuff and see all these cool places in New Jersey and stuff. And, and that happened to have been one of them was Greystone. And I had gone there and to photo, to try to get in, but it's massive. I did. I found a way into the boiler room, but I was downstairs in the basement and I'm just like, do I go further? And I'm just like, uh, no, I'm too chicken. Um, and that's, that's where I, uh, took a lot of exteriors and got that um, picture of the spirit I captured, um, which I know you want to talk yes. about. Um, so really it's just what has gone on in there, especially asylums. Mm -hmm. I mean, like what walk those halls, what happened, what stories are in there. And I don't know. It's just, it was always intriguing to me. Yeah. One of the things I want to do on this podcast is actually find somebody that was a patient at one of the like asylums back in the day that is now abandoned. Um, I, I'm like searching far and wide to find somebody that like lived at one of these places just so I can hear like what went on there, you know, just to have a more 
uh, cohesive and and like pieced together history of of some of these places. I think it would be super fascinating. So if anybody's listening that knows somebody that was in an asylum back in you know the eighties, the nineties, whenever, uh, even before that, like I would love to have you on here. But for you, uh, so talking about photography and and gear, things that you bring into abandoned places. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about your gear? Like what kind of camera do you use? Um, do you have gear that you prefer that you would recommend to up and coming explorers? And this can be a backpack, a pair of shoes, a light, a mask, anything like that? Well, my favorite gear is what I started with, which would be Canon. But in you know, if I had enough money, I would own an Icon. I would own a Sony. I mean, I just, it's just you know how you use it more so than anything else. But I use a Canon 5D Mark III. But I do have a favorite lens. So for any new explorers, I highly recommend the Irex 11 millimeter lens. It it's for full frame. Mind you, these are for full frame users. Um, it's an amazing lens. I just, it's so wide. It's, it's so amazing. And it's really great for the price. I mean, it's just like $600, $600 I believe, wow. which is really affordable for something that that's wa- that wide. Um, so I do recommend that. Um, boots. I just found my favorite boots and they're bait boots. Uh, they're military police boots kind of gear boots and I love them they're super super comfortable they've been wearing really well um I also recommend what everybody says a respirator wished I would have known about that years ago um but I highly recommend that and uh a tripod definitely nice any that yeah so I love that. I love talking gear with people. I think it's, you know, one of my favorite things to talk about because everybody brings their own little like specific things in, but we all overall carry the same kind of stuff. Um, unless you're like Rumham Revenge who brings in a duffel bag full of masks and outfits and things like that, you know? Um, Oh no, that's me too. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Do that too. Yeah, I do portraits. I do self portraits, and I, when I do get um, some uh, friends to dress, I dress them up in creepy little stuff and do that. I've been doing self portraits for a while. I actually have a couple of alter egos, Alice being one of them. Um, so yes, I, I I love Rumham. He is a great inspiration for me. But yeah, I've been doing portraits for a really long time as well. More so now than ever. Yeah. And can you talk to me about um, moderating different pages on Instagram? And I want to talk a little bit about social media. Uh, You're an owner for Discarded But Not Forgotten. You moderate Abandoned Horrors and Women of Urbex. Can you talk about uh, what why you wanted to get into doing that kind of stuff online? Okay, yeah. Well, I got really lucky with Discarded But Not Forgotten because I used to just uh, moderate for Kelly, who was the founder. But over the past year, she got busy with life and I kind of took it over. And she just recently came to me and said that she doesn't have time for it. And if I'd like to take it over. And I said, oh, my God, yes, please, definitely. So I took it over. And then this was my first time looking for moderators, which was hard for me because I'm a control freak and I like my page to look a certain way. Um, But I did. And I have two fabulous moder, three fabulous moderators and they're wonderful and so it's been a lot easier for me because now they do uh, they get to choose images so it's just fun you know I love getting featured why would why I want to do it I love it you know what who doesn't like getting featured so I thought that you know if I could do that for somebody else that would be great because it always made my day when I got featured so to make somebody happy that their work their art is appreciated it makes me feel good so I basically why I do it and women at Urbex, why wouldn't I want to moderate for an all woman, uh, you know, uh, page. I mean, they just feature women artists. So of course I'd want to do that support, you know, support women in this, um, in Urbex. So, and then, uh, abandoned horrors, of course, for my love of horror, creepy little pictures. Yes. I love that too. That's one of my favorite pages. So I'm happy to be a part of their hub and featuring creepy little tales that people create. 
So good. So good. And I love that, you know, there are dedicated pages for like, you know, women that do this kind of stuff because I, I've had a couple guests on the show that are women and they've talked about like when they first got in, like people weren't taking them seriously or they were like talking down to them because they were women in this space. But I think that overall, like an explorer is an explorer, you know, like why, why does it matter? But I think it's super cool that pages like that exist to highlight them and feature them. I think it's absolutely incredible. And I love that you're doing that kind of stuff. Thank you. Yeah, me too. It, it's really, it's really fun. I love Instagram. You know, it, I don't, it's my way to show my work, my art, because I don't do shows. I, I have done in the past, but I don't do it anymore because it's just expensive. Mm -hmm. And then you just get a bunch of art that sits in your house. And it's, I just thought, you know, Instagram's a great way to, you know, be in a community of like-minded people sharing, you know, places you've gone and, ha and your perspective on them. It's, it's wonderful. 100%. And do you have any urban exploration injury stories? Mm, no, not really. I've been uh, a few close calls actually. Uh, a few years ago, we were in this house and a friend of mine um, told me about it. And so, and he, and he had said to me, well, when you're in there, there's a hole in the floor in this one room. So just watch out. And usually I'm pretty careful, but it was getting close to the end of the day. And I started getting all like, you know, you got to get this shot, got to get that shot. And I rushed and my leg up to my thigh ended up in this hole and I screamed and I don't know, I, don't, I kind of blacked out because I'm just like, oh my God. And I pulled myself out, not even remember doing it. My friend who's in the other room, he's like, he hears me scream and he's like, you okay? And and I'm like, yeah, I just almost fell through a hole. And he's like, oh, okay, you all right? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. Um, but in any case, I was fine. And then recently when I was out in Buffalo, we were in a um, hotel and we were walking up the stairs and it was pretty dark. It was like kind of getting into getting to the place. And uh, thankfully I looked down with my flashlight when I was walking because the whole stair, that one stair was gone. And had I not looked down, that would have been a major injury. Absolutely. So I really got lucky there. Wow. Yeah. We. But other than that, nothing, nothing really else, you know, maybe a cut here and there, but nothing, no, no severe injuries. Good. I'm happy to hear that. You know, we've had a couple of people share yeah, share their friend <laughs> stories about, you know, we had a guy who talked about his friend getting impaled on a spike fence. Like this, this stuff is super risky. And I think people need to be aware of that, which is why I like to ask about, you know, the injury stories. And it's always fun to share those stories and look back at them and, and kind of laugh at them, you know? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. And we did that, you know, both times. <laughs> it's, it's funny, you know, I've had friends who, who have had, um, you know, not severely hurt themselves, but tripped, fallen, or went, you know, sort of went through a floor. And, but thankfully, they've all been okay. So that's good. That's good. And uh, let's, let's talk about your scariest explorations. I definitely want to talk about some spooky stuff here. Uh, you and I spoke a little bit on Instagram prior to the recording of this episode, and you shared some incredible, some incredible photos with me. Um, so tell me about your scariest explorations. Okay, well, the ghost ones were not scary. I'll we'll, we'll go to that after my scariest exploration cool. because it was um, it was my white whale, um, Dundas, aka Craigie Claire Castle in New York. Everybody knows about it, um, and um, I had been wanting to go there for years um, prior to the day that I had gone and me and a girlfriend of mine, uh, we went, it was what at the time it was like a three hour drive. And I thought, Oh my God, that's so far. It's like forever. And nowadays, I mean, I travel four or five hours. And so like three hours is like nothing, but in any case, so we get there and there's really no place to park. So we kind of just like pull off and, you know, we, trek up the hill to get to this castle and we're looking all over the place and I was just so excited about it 
um, brought all my gear, brought her because I was going to photograph her in it. And uh, we finally get to the castle and I like just like dropped to the ground, started crying because this is just was so beautiful. And uh, so we go about our way and we're exploring the place. And um, I don't know, we must have been in there maybe like an hour or so. I can't remember. And we're in this room on the second floor all the way in the back. And I look out the door and here comes these two guys and my heart drops. And, and like, I mean, I'm talking like Hicks from the sticks. Uh, they corner us in this room and they're like, what are you doing here? And I'm like, we're just taking pictures. And, you know, and they're like, well, you know, you're not supposed to be here. And, um, you know, you're not going to get out of here unless uh, you give us some money, basically. And we're like, okay. I'm like, I don't have any money on me. Now, mind you, I did, but I'm not stupid. I said, it's back at my car. And so basically we walked, we're walking out of there with them. And I'm just thinking of every criminal mind episode in my brain. And I'm just like, okay, so I'm walking fast. She's walking slow. I don't know why, but I hear him say, you know, tell your friend to slow down because she might hurt herself. Now I'm just like, Oh my God, like we're being politely robbed here. So, so I go down one set of stairs and then the guy, the other guy that was with him kind of came out and around and kind of, you know, saw me and kind of came around the corner as I went down. So it was, I was just like, really, it was really kind of scary. And then when we got outside, they're like, well, do you want to ride down? And I'm, I'm like, no, we'll walk down. And he's like, well, don't try to get away. And I was like, uh, you have the car. I'm pretty sure you're going to get there before we do. And then, so we're walking down and I'm terrified. I'm just like, okay, what if they try to steal my camera gear? And I'm like, I'm going to take my pictures out. So I take my, my card out of my camera and I put it down my sock. And then when we got down there, um, to the car, he had it, he had us blocked in, but it was only him at the time. And then, uh, I gave him, I said, all I have is 40 bucks. And he's like, okay. He's like, well, that'll teach you because next time, you know, ask before going in or something like that. And he went on his way. It was just so bizarre. Oh, and mind you, I was calling the cops on the way down. There was no cell phone reception. I tried getting in touch with the police. I was like, oh my God, I'm like, I know I'm trespassing, but I'm at Dundas Castle. There's this guy and he's these two guys and they're trying to extort money from us and I'm scared and, you know, I'm at Dundas Castle and it went out. And, uh, but we got in our car and we took off and we were, you know, the police called us back and I'm like, oh, we got out. They just took 40 bucks from us and whatever. And they went on their way, but it was pretty scary. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was. And then later on, I heard that there are locals that do this, um, that they go in and they rob people. So we, we were not the first. Wow. But I didn't know about that until after after the time. So it was it was definitely very scary for sure. Plus they were drunk. Okay, oh, so I was right. just like, are they going to kill us? Are they going to rape mm -hmm. us? Yeah, mm -hmm. they tried to say they were off duty police officers, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh okay. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah. So so I would have to say that that's probably my scariest explore. Um, and then um. There are two other places I talked about, uh, what was it? Um, Greystone and the ghost picture. I was photographing this window and, uh, I had looked down at my camera and I'm like, what is that? And it looked like this spirit, it, you know, a head, a shoulders, eyes. It was like kind of crazy. Now I wasn't scared, but that's just kind of like, you know, I don't really believe in ghosts, but I don't not believe in mm. them. But that was pretty much the closest I'd come to seeing an actual like spirit because we're all energy. So I put a story to that picture and said that, you know, that this woman probably lived in that room every day. Maybe she was in a wheelchair and she looked out the window every single day. And when she died, her spirit was left there. And so when the sun was hitting the window, she showed herself to me. Wow. And that's, that's my story. And I'm sticking to yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs>
So, uh, so yeah, but that wasn't scary. Uh, I don't get scared very easily. People always say, aren't you scared? And I said, no, I have a camera in my hand. I'm not scared. I mean, like scary goes out the window when I'm taking pictures. I don't think of anything else. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. You're, you're focused on getting the shots, not necessarily, uh, what's in front of the camera. So I totally understand that. Yeah. And then, so uh, do you have a, no, you're good. Do you have a favorite exploration that you can share? Oh, oh, there's too many. Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'll, I'll say two because they're the most, two most magical places I've ever been. First one would be an abandoned theater in Connecticut that everybody knows. Um, and, uh, I went, I had the pleasure of exploring it twice in the middle of the night. So, um, it was just, so amazing and so magical. And when I went back with my friends the second time, I told them, I said, this place is magical. And like, you're just going to love it and never want to leave. And when my one friend went, he's like, he goes, oh my God, you're so right. It is magical. It's just gorgeous. They're trying to renovate it now, but, um, but it's slow, you know, with renovations, it costs more than tearing it down. And then um, my other favorite explorer is a mansion um and i've been wanting to go there for years and finally over this past year i was able to go there and it's just stunning it's a 110 room mansion with just incredible architecture and a lot of history so i would have to say that those are my two favorite favorite explorers Definitely. And I went with great people. So it also had to do with the people I was with, actually. So um, that always makes it more fun and more memorable. 110 rooms. How long did that take for you guys to explore? Um, well, people are going to probably hate me <laughs> because the people who know the mansion that uh, I'm talking about, I have haters, too. Um I, I've been four times. Uh, yeah. So, um, I, I don't know. We just got lucky. I, I just, we first time I went, I was in there a couple hours. And then the second time I went, I was there for like six hours. And then the third time I went, I was there for another six hours. Overstayed my welcome that time. We, uh, almost got snagged. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I did portraits there, some of my best portrait work ever, and um, it's just magical. I love it. I love it so much. I'm obsessed with it. I've never really been taken in by a, an abandoned place as much as that mansion, for sure. It just did something to me. Wow. I was so high on adrenaline that, I mean, when I came home, I'm like, oh my God, mom, I went to, I was just like high. I was huh. just like reeling over the excitement of being in this beautiful, beautiful place. I wish that everybody could see it, which, you know, that's probably why I'm not liked because, you know, people like to hide these locations mm -hmm. or, you know, so, but I think that, you know, it's not going to be there when it's sold. They're not keeping it. They're going to tear it yeah. down. I mean, the property's worth more than the, than the, than the home. So it's like, people should see this piece of history because it's not going to be there. Yeah. 100%. And, uh, do you have a preference on exploring alone or with people? Oh, I like exploring with people. When I was younger, I went by myself because when I first started exploring in 2008, I didn't have any connections. I mean, I saw stuff online, but I just, you know, I never really got to, you know, I never got in the click. Um, so I went, I went anyway because I wanted to go places and see things and explore. Um, but in 2016, I made friends and, um, and then ever since then, I've been exploring with people and now I'm exploring with a great bunch of people. Shout out to my Urbex bus fam. So I love them. Very cool. Yeah. I, I definitely prefer to explore with people just for, you know, safety purposes, mostly like oh, absolutely. it just it makes yes. more sense. Uh, and then do you have any bucket list places? I know you had mentioned the one that you had wanted to explore for years and finally got to, but do you have any other bucket list items on your, on your list as far as urban exploring mm -hmm. goes? 
Oh boy. Yeah. You know, I want to go uh, to Europe. I mean, and I just can't name, I just want to go and explore Europe and see what I can see a lot of places. Of course, I would love to go to uh, Czech Republic. I believe the church with the ghosts um, in the pews, I would love to see that. But from what I understand now, it's just so, you know, uh, touristy that it's hard to even photograph. Um, here, you know, I have things on the list um, that hopefully I'm going to get to see, but I would definitely have to say travel abroad more than likely. That's what I would really, I hope that I get to do that someday and get to see abandoned places um, in other countries, especially the type of architecture I like. I mean, it's just incredible there. Yeah. And if you ever get over to like Portugal, there's this absolutely stunning 360 degree panoramic restaurant and it overlooks the city of Lisbon in Portugal. And like, it is one of the coolest places I've ever gotten to explore. It, it was so crazy. Oh, no. oh, it sounds amazing. I'm sure I've probably seen pictures of it. And then uh, if you could live in one place you've explored for one week, which place would it be? My mansion? Yeah, yeah. I figured. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't get enough of that place. <laughs> I love it. Yes definitely yes there's still even though i've been there many times uh there's just still so much more to photograph and just being there and just i don't know it's just incredible absolutely so yeah that would definitely be it cool cool and uh my last question for you is what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started exploring <laughs> yeah respirator for sure Lord knows what I did to my lungs and a tripod actually. Um, no, I didn't used to carry a tripod back, back um, when I first started exploring. Um, that, that's about it. I mean, I feel like everything's been a journey. So, um, and, um, you know, always learning. So I would have to just say those, those two things. Cool. And if uh, people want to continue to follow your journey, where can they find you online? Drop your social media. Oh, yeah. Well, I have a few pages, um, but I, my main um, Urbex page is Alice underscore in underscore Wanderlust, I believe. And then uh, I have a portrait page where I solely dedicate um, to just my creepy little portraits. And that's uh, I am Alice and it has some underscores in there or whatever, but I don't know exactly what it is. It's just I underscore am underscore Alice. Maybe there's an underscore before the I, I don't know. That was Kim, AKA Alice in Wanderlust or I am Alice. Thank you so much for coming on the No Tracers podcast. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and leave a rating and feedback down at the bottom of the No Tracers podcast on Apple Podcasts. It really helps us grow on the Apple iTunes charts so we can find more listeners that are just like you that love hearing these urban exploration stories. My name's Kay. I'm your host on this podcast. I am known as No Tracers, No Dot Tracers on Instagram or No Tracers on TikTok if you guys want to follow me. Check out all the links down in the description and I will talk to you guys next week for another episode of No Tracers, the podcast. If you guys want to come on the show, please DM me on Instagram at No Dot Tracers and we'll get you on the show. I would love to hear your stories. If you know somebody that explores abandoned places, you should uh, tell them to hit me up because I want to hear their stories too. All right, guys. Enjoy your week. Stay strong. Keep enduring. Go out. Go explore something. And remember, leave no trace.